So we have with us today, we have Gary Allen uh, from Vancouver Island. He is a, how would you put it? A wolf owner? Educator. A, a wolf educator. Okay, perfect. And uh, we, we were just talking about wolves have had such a bad rap over the years, you know, Little Red Riding Hood and, and this kind of archetype of evil. But really, you've learned a lot from them. So, Yeah. Um, well, as I mentioned, I've been, you know, I've been uh, doing this since 2003 uh, when and I, I got my first, uh, what was kind of a mid-content wolf dog. He was 50% wolf 50 um, Malamute. And, uh, and, then, and then I've gotten uh, about four or five others since then. And, you know, you're right that, you know, wolves have such a, um, a bad rap. I mean, I've just, I intimately observed their, their behavior and particularly the, the later ones that, you know, like, like Tundra and Nahani and Mohegan and Denali and Stakai. Those are the, the ones since uh, the first one I got. And they're, they're content of the wolf as well into the 90%. So they, in fact, are, are wolves. They just have a little bit of dog which means I can keep them without a, um, a permit. And yeah, you know, the, the, uh, if you look at it from a cultural aspect, you know, you look at it for the Europeans when they came over mm -hmm. from, from Europe and, uh, and settled on uh, what the uh, uh, First Nations people would say is Turtle Island, uh, that being North America, you know, they brought all the, the, um, the attitudes of the wolf from, from North America or from Europe. But the, the, the view of the wolf from the First Nations people, you know, is, is completely different. So, right. you know, we should have had the First Nations people doing the, uh, the public relations uh, of the wolf rather than the Europeans. Um, you know, here's some That's of the true things. for a lot of things, I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I concur with you uh, fully on that, uh, uh, Robert. Um, you know, when I talk to the students and adult audiences, mm -hmm. I say that, Wolf is family. Mm. If you can think of this animal, it's one of the most social animals um, on the planet. It's very, very family oriented. So what you end up typically seeing is in a, in a pack of, let's say, around 10 wolves, you know, there's one breeding pair. The, those are the dominant wolves, the dominant right. female, dominant male. Some people refer to it as alpha female, alpha male, but uh, I like to use the word dominant. Mm -hmm. um, they have the pops, and they're the ones that are um, that initially, you know, raise those pups, and then as they get other older wolves into the into the pack, which could be, you know, pups from previous years, you know, that that whole socialized organization of the pack or the family group looks after those wolves, right? And and they do it in a in an incredibly loving way, um, you know, I've written articles about saying that, you know, humans can learn so much about good family dynamics from wolves. And if you look at the First Nations uh, family structure, that's fashioned after the wolf. And I, I pointed that out to some hereditary chiefs and, and uh, elders and knowledge keepers I've worked with. And I said, you know, if you look at, at your family structure and the, and the wolf family structure, they're almost identical. And, and so you have things like, you know, the wolf hunts in a pack in, in a group and it's a teamwork and, and they share the food. If you look at the first nations, you know, they share their food, uh, you know, if they're hunting or fishing or, or, you know, gathering uh, uh, berries and that, if you look at the upbringing of the, of the wolf pups and you look at the upbringing of the first nations children, it's, it's almost, identical um you know you've heard the uh, the comment that it takes a village to raise a wolf or to raise a child well that's a first nations uh, saying right and if you look at 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 that upbringing of, of the first nations children it's done on a communal basis mm -hmm. uh, um you know grandparents play a, a huge role so do the, the uncle of the, of the father. You know, if the father dies, it's generally the uncle that, that takes over. Um, and, and if you look at uh, the raising of wolf pups, um, it's very, very much that, that way that they, uh, you know, like the, 
the yearlings play a, a huge role in, in puppy sitting and, uh, and showing them how to hunt and, and uh, things of that nature. So wolves are very, very family oriented. And with that, uh, Robert, what you find is that wolves are very sentient. These are animals with great sense of feeling. Um, and w the interesting thing that I found is that uh, wolves seem to, um, with humans, they, they identify more with, with females than males. And, and that's a, a really interesting observation. And I, I attribute that to a couple of things. One, women tend to be much more compassionate and nurturing than than men. Not always, but, you know, as a sort of general kind of rule type thing. And, uh, and the wolves, they sense that. They sense that very quickly. Also, you know, women didn't hunt and trap wolves uh, and that. That was, that was male. So they really identify uh, very much uh, towards, uh, towards females. So there's that really kind of nurturing um, feeling you know that they have and and you see that towards their uh, their their offspring and uh, we're going to see Mahegan in, in a few minutes now Mahegan is the mother of the two pups um, Mahegan spelled M-A-H-I-K-A-N it's the word for wolf in the Cree language okay yeah and uh, and and so she just you know, when she had these pups um, back, they were born on May the 5th, 2019. So they're almost getting close to two years of age. It was remarkable watching her look after those pups. Um, the father, unfortunately, had, had passed away. And so she was in, in the human sense, a single parent uh, mother. Um, and, and it was just incredible how much um, patient she had with them, how she cared for them, nursed them, washed them, licked them, um, and, and let them play and, and do, um, you know, what, what pups do. And, uh, and, sh and she made it very clear, uh, Robert, to my wife, Sally, and myself, we could go into the enclosure where they were, but she made it very clear that she was the one raising the pups, right. not us. Right. Um, and that and that's a was a really interesting um, sort of observation and and to see that 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 play out. So how how did uh, did she communicate that? Was it just, sorry? How, how did um, Ma, is it, sorry? Is it McKenna? Mahegan. Ma, sorry, Mahegan. How did Mahegan communicate that she was the parent? She was the the dominant oh, one. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Well. Um, and I'll show you where the, uh, the den is. Uh, we'll go outside and, and you can see that. Um, so when they were born, uh, they stayed in the den with her for the first 17 days. When I, when I saw them at the entrance to the den for the first time, they were 17 days old. It took about a couple of days for them to come out. You know, it's quite a climb up the, the steep embankment um, and, and that – Again, Mahiga would let us go out into the uh, enclosure and we could sit on a bench. Um, we'd just sit there. If the pups came to us, you know, we, we'd have our hands down and if they wanted to sniff our hands. Mahegan was okay. Yeah. Um, she nursed them about four feet away from me. So she felt comfortable with me being there. Um, but then I think it was on June the 1st that um, when I went out there in the morning to kind of feed them in that, they weren't around the den. Mm. And I went, oh, okay, well, well, where'd they go? And she had taken them down into the enclosure. The, the enclosure they're in is about two-thirds of an acre. And there's a big pile of, of cottonwood log rounds that are, that are all stacked uh, randomly on, uh, uh, on top of each other. And there's little they, – they dug little – tunnels and, and whatever. And she took them down there uh, to be raised. And, and uh, you know, the message to us was, um, you know, I'm taking them down there. You can come and, and, and see them. She would let us know where the boundary was. Okay. Right. If we stepped a bit too far and that she would just um, 
she wouldn't growl or whatever. She would just sort of run at us and that she didn't show her teeth or, or whatever. I mean, she knew us and she trusted us. And so I would back off and I would sit on the grass, you know, about 10 feet away from that, let's say that imaginary boundary. And she, you know, she uh, looked after the pups and, uh, um, yeah, so it was very clear that, uh, you know, I'm the caregiver here, not you. Well, and, and I know experience with dogs and obviously wolves are very different. This is something we've talked about before, but that animals such as a wolf, such as a dog, they, they teach us sometimes more than we teach them about oh. the importance of, of rules and sort of having things like boundaries uh, and, and knowing our own limitations. Yeah, um, very true. Um, you know, she, um, she she was such a a confident mom. Yeah. You know that. You know, you got that that sense of confidence from her. Look, at, and this was her first litter. Um, so this is what's remarkable. This is her first litter. She was almost five years of age. In the wild, Robert, she would have. You know, she would remember. As a pup, she'd remember being a yearling looking after that year's pups. And then, you know, the constant sort of uh, puppy carrying, um, you know, in that five years that, let's say, she lived in the pack. She had none of that. Mm. Right. She just did it, you know, on, on pure, I guess, Intuition. instinct, knowing yeah, what to yeah. do. But but she did it, you know, um, incredibly, incredibly well. So wolves are family. Um, and, uh, and I get to watch it, uh, um, you know, daily. Um, in fact, I, I have two big TV screens just in front of me. And right now I can look at one of the wolves laying in the, uh, on the, uh, the snow. And so I can, I can watch your movements from my office here because I have two big security cameras and that. So it's, you know, I'm unobtrusive. Um, mm. and, and I, I watch them, um, I, I watch the the male pup Denali. He's very much connected to his mom. You know, if if Mahegan's laying down, he's generally four or five feet away. <clears throat> Stakai, who is is the female pup, and by the way, Stakai spelled S T Q E colon Y E is the word for wolf in the Hokaminum language, which is the Coast Salish people on the eastern. Uh, coast of uh, Vancouver Island here. Um, she's much more adventuresome. She, you know, she engages uh, with mom and, and with her brother. But, you know, many times I'm watching the, uh, the camera and she's off uh, um, and, uh, uh, you know, on her own. And then, you know, lots of times she'll be laying down in a different part of the, of the enclosure than where, where, um, uh, where Denali is with his mom. Do you want to see Tundra? Of course. Of course. Yeah. Well, here, so Tund Tundra's the oldest, correct? She, yeah, she, she's going to be 14 pretty soon. Oh, there. There she is, Robert. Hey, Tundra. So she's, she's in the bedroom here. Yeah. Um, so she's about 90%. She's 90% wolf. Um, oh. She's the one I take into the uh, into the schools. So we've done over 250 schools in BC, and she's seen over 35,000 students and teachers. And uh, um, and uh, yeah, so she's she's pretty old as a wolf, uh, and so she likes she likes being in the in the house, don't you? Hey, girl. Yeah. She seems and, uh, a little shy right now. Yeah, she, you know, she's just laying there wanting to, uh, uh, you know, kind of be on her own. I mean, I can, here, I can, there you are, hey. And she has a, you know, she, she enjoys the, uh, the, the interaction. Uh, um, but it, again, it's what it is. It's, it's, if they want to interact with you, they will. They're, they're a right. bit like a cat. You know how a cat right, will, right. You know, will, will come to you if it wants to, and if it doesn't, you know. Um, they're elective animals. And, they, uh, yeah. yeah, and so wolves are very much that way. And, you know, t Tundra seeks us out 
you know, quite a bit. <clears throat> there she is. She's, she's uh, hey, laying down here. Um, and uh, this is the way she is with the children, uh, Robert. She, you know, when I take her, um, not now, because, uh, you know, when I do visits with schools now during COVID, we do it all outside. So it's really outdoor education. And, you know, we, we don't have to worry about, you know, the, the potential so much of transmission of the, the virus or whatever. But previous to that, you know, we do it in gymnasiums and she'd just stand there and the, the <laughs> students would pet her. And, and of course, that's what they wanted to do, you know, is, was yeah. to interact with her. Now, you've had Tundra since she was a pup, is that correct? Three weeks of age when, when oh, I got her okay. from the breeder to, to raise her. Yeah. So, so and, and this is something that I'm, that I'm always trying to understand. There's, there's an animal that's uh, domesticated, there's an animal in captivity, and then there's obviously a, like a wild animal. So Tundra would be considered a, a wolf in captivity, or is Tundra just a domestic wolf? Um, well, um, you know, she, I mean, she's born in captivity, right? She's born, right. born to, uh, at a breeder's place. Uh, and, and she was, um, the breeder for Tundra was from Alberta. Um, and that, so, you know, she, she has, uh, been with us, you know, since, you know, as I say, three weeks of, of age. Yeah. So, um. You know, she, um, you know, I guess, I mean, she's domesticated in the sense of, uh, you know, that she lives, you know, with us. Um, the ones when we go out the back and see the three out the back, you're going to see a, an incredible difference uh, in, in behavior. Mm. Like they're, they're for all intents and work uh, purposes. Oh, yeah, she's uh, huge. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. It's awesome. the, you know, uh, they're not domesticated out, out there in, okay. in any way. I mean, I can't even get a leash on them to take them for a walk. Okay. That's, that's how much they don't want to, uh, um, you know, to be in any way connected to a human. So maybe this is a good time. I can, uh, I can get my boots on and my hat and we can wander out the back and see, uh, and see, see, there's, there's the, the TV screens that I talk about. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's what I can, I can, how I can observe them and spy on them, so to speak. So what, in a, in a unintrusive way. What, what got you like, what's the history of this? Because this is a wonderful educational program to, to teach kids about ecosystems and the importance of community family. What, what got you into uh, working with wolves? Well, I, you know, I always, uh, I always had dogs and, uh, and then, you know, enjoyed wolves. You know, uh, when I was going through high school, you know, we had uh, Farley Mowat's book, Never Cry Wolf, as part of our curriculum. And, you know, you get to know wolves. And, and, uh, and so when I had the opportunity to get, uh, you know, these very high content wolf dogs, I really had no intention of doing wolf education it just that just unfolded uh, robert because everybody wanted to see tundra right and and uh, um you can see the snow on the ground and uh, um, we'll go in the uh, the enclosure here. Here's the gate. There's a little clip here that just so that they they're really smart, so they oh, can put yeah, that yeah. up real quickly. But um, they don't, and uh, and that. So I'll just sit here, and then uh, they're gonna come. There's so here. Let's sit down without falling down here <laughs> ah, okay okay so here you can see oh yeah that's well. Mahiga the mum wow right there and so what I have here is a is a, a treat and I'm gonna feed it to her 
So right yeah. away, it just yeah. comes, whoa. Yeah, Sorry, that there's is there's quite different. There's a plane going right over top tundra. of us. So, uh, so there's, there's mom with the, and it, there's your two pups. Uh, <laughs> here we are. So wow. Mahegan's the black one. The one in the front is, uh, is Stakai. Yeah. And that's the female pup. And there's Denali, the male pup. Wow. Beautiful so, coats on them and all completely unique. Yeah. Yeah. In terms they're, of the they're, colorings. Yeah. Their coats are different color, their personalities. I mean, that's what you find. I mean, you know, Robert, they're just like humans. They're, you know, their mm -hmm. personalities are all different. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, I've got another piece here that I'm going to try to see if if I can give it to one of the pups. Um, um, if I throw it out there, Mahegan's pretty quick, so she'll come and get it. So Stakai can see that I've got that I've got it, and uh, so I'm trying to get her to come a little bit closer, and then I'll see if I can get it to her. Come on, Stakai. See how they don't want to come to you? Yeah. You know, like they're not. You know, if I came out here and there was three dogs, right, they'd be all over me. Um, Mahegan comes, you know, she got the, the treat. She may come and engage with me. She did, oh, about a half an hour ago. But mm. uh, here, let me. See? Oh, yeah, yeah. Guy got it. And and off she runs. Hey, Mahegan, how you doing, girl? Hey, how are you? So Mahegan is probably the more social of the three of them. Yeah, she's the only one that will come to me, and uh, and I can, uh, you know, we've raised her from five weeks of age, and right. uh, you know, so she she engages with us, uh, you know, she'll come and uh, I can pet her, I can give her tummy rubs, but her two pops uh, want nothing; they don't want to come up mm. to me and. And do that now. You can see Mahegan's coming. Come on, girl. Hey, how you doing? I got my hand out, so we'll see if, if she uh, see she sniffs where where I was sitting. I was sitting on that piece mm. of cement, so you can see her sniffing. And they do that. They want to know the 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 nose is what really defines the wolf. They want to smell that scent, right. make sure it's safe, that they feel secure. There's the two pups there. Um, they, uh, you know, when when I, I mentioned earlier that Mahegan took the, from where the den area is and down to the, uh, to the, uh, the logs. And uh, I think, you know, clearly it was a message to them that, uh, um, you know, you stay with me. And, and so they've learned that even though, like, they trust me, you know, it's not that, um, they don't trust me. They just don't want to have any contact because wolves don't do that in the wild. Right, you know, right. You, you, you seldom ever see one in the wild and they don't want to come up to you, you know, to sniff you out. They, they want to avoid you. Yeah. They live longer if they avoid humans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, like, like coyotes, yeah. right? Coyotes don't, yeah. they're not pets. No, but what's interesting is coyotes will – will live in an urban environment. Like mm -hmm. you've got coyotes in, Every, uh, everywhere, you know? Yeah. You know, in Coquitlam, Surrey, uh, Stanley park, yeah. you don't have wolves in, in an urban environment. You never see them in an right. urban environment. Uh, so coyotes, while they'll be, um, you know, uh, they'll stay kind of away from, from humans at the same time, they feel quite comfortable living in in an urban environment. I mean, you got coyotes in Central Park in New York City, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so here, here's. Oh, is this their den? Can you see the uh, the den there? Whoa, that's so the they... den that that Mahegan and and Nahani dug. It's three wow. feet deep, Robert, and it goes back six to eight feet. I can't even see the back of the of the den, but that's where she had those pups. Now. Here's the bench that I would sit on, and she would be nursing them. There's a video about there, about four feet away, and uh, 
and then what she did was she took him down to that pile of logs. Can you see the pile of logs? Yeah. That's where she took him. And, and that's where she raised them. Wow. Um, so there's Denali there. And then mom and daughter are over there. Now, but they, um, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say for their diet, I mean, they must eat lots, obviously. So what, what, like, what sort of a diet do you have them on? Uh, um, yeah, wolves are carnivores, so they eat meat. Um, <laughs> I buy chicken uh, f for them. Um, uh, we get what are called uh, chicken carcasses or mm. the neck and the back attached. Right. And, and they get that raw and they eat that. They like that. Um, and then they get, I buy what is called stewing fowls. Um, and uh, here, I'm just going to come up here. I just want to. Um, where are you there? I just want to get back into my, uh, uh, where my, let's see, there, there they are. Um, ah, good. Sometimes if I get out of the, uh, internet range, it, uh, you lose kind of a bit of the, uh, of the, uh, the focus, but hey, it's back in now. Um. And I buy the stewing fowls, so they're the older birds, and, and right. we cook that, and, and then we, we give them that cooked chicken. The only reason we cook it is that we can distribute more of the, <coughs> of the meat, mm. and, right. and then they get, they get uh, um, we get beef fat from raw from uh, the butcher, and they, uh, uh, they eat that. They like that. Now, when... Um, when you walked in, it, it looked like there was a trail around the perimeter. So yep. do, do the wolves, do they kind of just stick to sort of one kind of section and they're doing patrols or uh, like, like what, what, what is their behavior like when you observe? Well, them? they, yeah, they, you can see that along the fence here, yeah. there's a, there's a trail and there's uh, uh, they have different sort of trails. There's a trail that goes down, there towards that maple tree um they they explore the whole territory but yeah they have distinct trails as they do in the wild mm -hmm. um right. and and so they know the shortcuts to get to certain places and things like that but um the one thing about wolf behavior is it's very purposeful and by that i mean that if they're going to travel in their territory they do it for a purpose. It, you know, they don't go out for like, you know, we would do a Sunday drive, right? You know, just <laughs> a stroll, uh, yeah. You know, yeah, or, you know, a Sunday walk in the park type thing. Uh, isn't this nice and that? I mean, they're doing it either to hunt mm. or, uh, or to defend their territory or whatever. They, they don't waste any energy by, um, you know, wandering around just because they want to want, want to wander around. Um, have you, uh, we got have, another, oh, yeah. another plane overhead. <laughs> have you ever given them like uh, my dog? She loves chasing squirrels. She's never caught one, and I don't think she ever oh, will. But yeah. loves chasing things. Do do Mahegan, uh, Stakai, and Denali? Do they ever chase after? Oh, they, animal they hunt. Any? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, you. These are predators, uh, Robert. Um, so, for example, there's been some feral cats that have made the mistake of coming into the into the enclosure. So these are these are not like the neighbor's cat. Um, right. You know, it may at one point have been a neighbor's cat, but <laughs> you know, it's it's a feral cat. I mean, it yeah. uh, uh, and and they'll hunt them. They they've killed uh, three of them. Uh, there was a. Uh, a raccoon that made the mistake of coming in. Um, so that's what I say to people is, you know, you can't take the predator instinct out of these. Right. And that they, yeah. you know, that's, these are that's still what predators. they are. They're, it's built into their DNA. Yeah. They're, you know, we're predators and they're pretty efficient predators. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, 
yeah, we can't have cats and, uh, you know, you couldn't put like uh, ducks out here or <laughs> bunny rabbits or <laughs> that's called uh, lunch. So there you can see Denali coming sort of towards me. Um, they, so you can see that I don't train them, uh, mm -hmm. um, Robert, you know, they, you know, as I say, I can't even get a leash on them. Mm -hmm. um, they don't want that, but they're, they get lots of exercise out here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're running around all the time. Um, uh, you know, and, and, uh, you know, like Mahegan will come up to me when she wants to and I right. can pet her and, and, and do things like that. But, um, you know, if I call her, she's not going to come, uh, to me, you know, it's right. not, you know, like a, like a dog you would call and, you know, would come e even Tundra in the house there, you know, uh, if she's laying down down and and we call her like you know in the morning we want to take her out for a walk so she can have a pee in that and you know sometimes it takes her like five minutes to get up off her bed or, or whatever because she's not real excited about that but we want to take her out to you know make sure that she I mean she's very good she doesn't mess in the house or whatever uh so in that sense you know she's house trained right but uh um uh you know she you can call her and it's like, uh, you yeah. know, it's, you know, Reluctant. eventually she gets moving. Now, now would these, would these three wolves, as they get older, would they ever transition into your house? Because you're, you're talking about Mahegan and the other wolf that helped dig that den. Yeah. That is now passed. Did that dog ever transition into the home or, or, or did no. it live its life out no. here? Okay. No. And, and Mahegan, like they can, um, over towards that part of, you can see where the security camera is mm. and behind that, there's a part of the enclosure that goes up alongside the house. Right. And, uh, there's Mahegan laying down over there. Um, and there's a door there and, uh, you know, in the summertime we could leave that door open and, uh, Mahegan, she's wandered in once or twice but really really cautiously right uh, tail between her legs you know when she she's not like that around us you know here or whatever uh, um and that but uh um no they they see they don't want to get trapped they think yeah. they're going to get trapped inside right. the house right and and they don't want that so they um Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Good. Good. All right. So, so that was awesome. So you you created this enclosure. Now, how long ago did you put that all together? This this spot for uh, for the wolves. Here, I'm just gonna. Can you see tundra? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll just do that while I. There we are. Hey tundra. So sorry. What was the question, uh, Robert? It was, uh, you had that enclosure all set up for them. How long have you had that, that space? Like how long have you been where you are? Okay. Um, we've been, we've been here, uh, almost four years. The, uh, hey girl, um, we moved down from the Northern end of Vancouver Island to this place in Nanaimo. That was, uh, um, in, in March of 2017. And, and so, we bought the place in about November previous. So I had the, the fencing all done. I mean, I had to have all the fencing and everything, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because when I brought them down here, you know, they'd have to be contained. So uh, yeah. that, that was all done uh, um, while we were transitioning, you know, from the, the place that we lived to, to moving down here. Now those wolves, uh, if, if say I was to go into that pen, which I wouldn't be doing, of course, but would they, would they see me as an enemy? Like, is it because they know you or if, if you came in the enclosure with me? Well, if I went in there by myself, they probably think that I'm a um, the, the two pups would run. Right. Yeah. And that I have had, um, there's a first nations lady who's a, a filmmaker and, mm -hmm. uh, 
and she's come with her family and taken uh, um, video and, and that. Um, and she went in there with me, uh, Robert, and uh, of course, Stakai and Denali, um, they kept their distance. But what was interesting was that Mahegan, um, she was about this distance that I'm showing um, um, Tundra right now. Tundra is about four feet from me. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, um, Tricia didn't show any fear. And uh, um, Mahegan came right up to her and, uh, and sniffed her. Um, no aggression, like there wasn't growling or, uh, or, you know, teeth being shown or anything of that nature. Um, and uh, now, yeah, it really depends on the personality, right? Because I could bring somebody else in there, right. which I don't do. I mean, th that was a real one-off uh, situation. And, uh, um, and uh, uh, you know, it worked out very well. I mean, I was right by Tricia. So, yes. you know, um, you know uh, Mahegan felt comfortable. But but Mahegan was able to sense sort of the uh, the nature the the disposition of this person and, and yeah, kind of assess yeah. them out right yeah so, oh oh you know so easily I mean they 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 are so smart Robert um, they know what I'm going to do before I know what I'm going to do when I'm out there um, you know they just they sense you they they're very as I mentioned, very uh, sentient animals. Uh, mm. um, Nahani, the uh, the uh, the father, the uh, the Arctic, uh, he was incredibly um, uh, smart. He was the breeder I got him from. Had been breeding for twenty five years, and he said that this is the smartest pup that he had ever raised. Um, he was doing obstacle courses at four weeks of age. Um, he, you want to hear a story as to how they can problem solve? Because oh, they course. can, they could do that. Whereas uh, dogs can't. Mm. Even even your really intelligent breeds, you know, they. Like a border that's collie. Yeah, border collies, things like that. You know, th th that's training. But so so Nahani, the uh, the the Arctic uh, uh, pup, and then Mahegan. So I got him from the same breeder, two different litters got them the same time they came up from the u.s and i went and got them uh brought them home and uh now they were really you know i had spent a lot of time working with them because i wanted to get them at three weeks that's mm -hmm. when you got to get them because that's when they bond with you and uh but he wouldn't give them to me until five weeks so they bonded down at his place they came to our place and they had to rebond and that's really hard to do with these animals particularly when it's that high of wolf content you could tell that from seeing uh the behavior of stakai and denali right right um so they're about a year old it's in the summertime it's after dinner they're out on the deck so this is the place where we used to live up uh, northern end of vancouver island they're out on the deck and uh they, w they would play with this, um, it was, you know, like um, the, the cable for a satellite TV dish. Mm. Um, they were playing with that because it, it, it didn't work. Um, and so this thing was about 20 feet long. Um, and, and they would kind of play tug of war with it. I'd watch it so they did kind of chew it and, and get pieces of, you know, copper wire or whatever. But anyway, this one evening, somehow Mahegan has got this thing wrapped around her neck twice and around and a couple um, loops around her front right leg. Mm -hmm. And I, and I saw this and I, and, and I could see that she was in a bit of distress, you know, like if she moved, yeah. it got tighter. Right. Yeah. And, and so the, now Nahani is standing right beside her. So the, the human response would be to go out there, and then grab it and, and unravel it off right. of her neck. Well, that's the wrong thing to do because if I went out there to do that, as much as she knew mm. me and trusted me, she'd try to run away. Right. So I watched it and what did the honey do? I mean, this is, this is her buddy. Um, he realized that 
you know, Mohegan was in a bit of trouble. So he grabbed the cable on her neck and unraveled it twice off of her neck and then just dropped it on the deck. And then she just stepped out of it uh, with her, with her leg. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? Well, I mean, cause, cause these, these are animals that survive, right? I mean, yeah. they, they see a problem in nature. They're faced with a problem in nature and they, yeah. they adapt to it. Yeah. And that, and wow. like yeah. he knew which way to go because yeah. if he went the wrong way. Exactly. It was tighter. He's now put four loops on her, on her neck. Right. Yeah. And it, and it was, it was so matter of a fact, Robert, it was like, okay, um, this is the solution. And he did it. Um, and, and so that's my definition of problem solving is that they encounter a situation yes. that they've never encountered before and they find a solution to it. Yeah. Um, another one in, in the wild, uh, this is up in Ellesmere Island. So, uh, you know, 80 degrees North. Uh, so again, Arctic, uh, wolves, mm -hmm. and it's not that Arctic wolves are the only problem solvers. The, the other ones are too, but this one, <clears throat> so there was a yearling left to look after these three or four pups while the, the other members of the pack went off hunting and this musk oxen was coming along the path. I mean, it's, you know, it's just all tundra, right? Yeah. Um, so it's coming along this path that's going right by the den and, and the three or four pups are there and the musk oxen would kill the pups because mm -hmm. they know that they're going to get to be big wolves and they're going to come and try to kill it or the musk oxen uh, young. Right. So the yearling knows that it can't challenge the, the musk ox and then push it away or anything. It, you know, it's a big animal. So what it did was there was a carcass of a snowshoe hare that was uh, nearby that they used as a toy. So he went and got that and ran off the trail a bit and started flinging it up in the air. And what did the pups do? Well, the pups wanted to play. So they came over towards he where he or she was, I'm not sure what, what sex of the, the yearling was, but uh, he, the, the yearlings playing with it and the pups go over there and the musk oxen continues to walk along the trail. And, um, and of course the pups aren't there because they're over playing with the yearling. So, you know, that was uh, another example of the problem solving, you know, how yeah. am I going to, make this a safe situation because it could be a fatal situation. Yeah. Cause, cause like you said, the yearling couldn't take on the musk ox either. Right. So no, how no. do we, how do we divert this problem? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so much of, of what you, you, you've been saying has made me think like, there's so much that we can learn from these animals. What's, what's one of the, oh, the most important things that you've learned? Like something that's uh, changed the way that you think. Well, what I've learned is that these are highly intelligent animals. Mm -hmm. um, they're highly sentient. Their family, their commitment to family is is just so strong. Uh, these are, and, and then, you know, what I've learned in terms of studying them, in terms of studies and that wolf studies as to how important they are in ecosystems. Right. And, uh, and as we, unfortunately continue to cull them and and uh and hunt them you know we're really doing incredibly um a lot of damage uh you know what they're finding uh not only with wolves but like apex predators top predators uh robert both in terms of terrestrial ones as well as aquatic ones like for example sharks and uh, right. and you know also like wolves and and uh um in lions and leopards in Africa, these animals, these apex predators are really important to us because what they do is they keep disease under control. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're in a zoonotic uh, virus right now, right? That's hot from an animal to a human, that being the zoonotic virus. And uh, wolves are able to do that with things like uh, chronic wasting disease, uh, which is the equivalent of um, mad cow disease in, in ungulates. So that yeah, and deer in uh, deer, there's, there's like zombie deers or something like that. Yeah. The, yeah. The, those, that's the chronic wasting disease. Yeah. So if humans eat those animals, 
um, and you can eat them, um, you know, when you don't see them being um, that sick, right? Right. The, the, the as, uh, somatic uh, um, uh, ones that we with the virus, you, you know, they're carrying the virus. You just don't know that they've got the virus, right? And, and so if you eat that meat, uh, as you, if you ate the, um, the mad cow uh, um, um, meat, you die. I mean, there's no, there's no um, um, cure for it. Um, and that, so they, you know, that's what they do. Uh, sharks do that in the ocean um, in terms of keeping uh, um, uh, animals that are unhealthy and that uh, they kill them. Now, what's interesting is when the wolf eats that, that meat um, of, the, of the deer, because of the amino acids that mm. canines have, wolves being part of the canine family, they don't, they don't get sick from it. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, um, uh, lions and leopards in Africa, are uh, they, they hunt baboons. Right. Baboons have a, uh, a parasite, an intestinal parasite, that if it gets passed on to humans, so a baboon, you know, poops, right? And... Right. Uh, and the parasites in the in the feces, uh, you know, somehow the that parasite gets into the human food chain or whatever, and that, well, that that parasite's fatal to to man. Um, so, um, as we're killing off leopards and lions in Africa, the, the baboons are getting closer to human settlements, right? And 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 that's putting them at risk. Uh, so. You know, I'm not sure that, that we've learned this from this pandemic because this is not the last pandemic. Um, but, you know, where you've got zoonotic viruses and the more the more we kill off uh, these top predators and that the more uh, and the more we kill off biodiversity, we make. The human, we make humans much more susceptible to these viruses because the viruses need a host and we're the perfect host. Um, and that, so we really need these, uh, these top predators and, and the importance of biodiversity. And unfortunately, I don't hear really any world leaders talking about improving biodiversity. They're talking mm. about, yeah, we need to get rid of, uh, um, the, the and, carbon in the yeah. atmosphere, and that's important. But also, I would argue the biodiversity and the importance of improving that is equally as, as important. And, and so wolves will do that in their environment as other top predators will do. Yeah, they, they, they keep the balance of the ecosystem. Oh, yeah. And that because... Wolves are also a, a keystone species. So you have a top predator, mm. um, and then you have certain top predators are keystone species, meaning <coughs> that they just have such a powerful impact upon an ecosystem in terms of creating healthy ones and maintaining healthy ones. And the yeah. wolf is, uh, is a uh, keystone species. So if they go extinct, we could very well, like we almost become endangered. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. if you look at like the chronic wasting disease, yeah, where, where is it real prevalent? Well, it's in Canada. It's real prevalent in southern Saskatchewan and, and Alberta. Areas that don't have wolves. Exactly. Oh, shit. Ex yeah. Exactly. So, um, you know, it's, uh, um, you know, we're just not making wise choices here, mm -hmm. Robert. Right. So... So is that because of, of hunting of these apex predators or is that because? Yeah. Um, oh, okay. A couple, a couple reasons. Um, the, uh, you know, in Southern Saskatchewan and Alberta, that's ranching country. Right. And the ranchers are a big problem because they don't want predators on the landscape, even not only in, on their private land, but, you know, many of them um, graze their, their cattle on public land in the summertime. And they want, they want to cleanse 
<coughs> the public lands of, of predators too, which is really, really wrong. So, so ranchers are a huge problem. I always mm -hmm. have been. And, uh, and then, and then you got hunters, including governments, you know, governments that are hunting them, you know, we, yeah. they're, they're called wolf wolves. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and so, uh, um, you know, it's, that's really what you, what you're fighting against. But, you know, Robert, the, the thing I find really encouraging is, you know, when I go to talk to these students, either mm -hmm. over Zoom or in person, you know, the grade threes and above, they, they get this. They right. understand that, that we need this. They understand the interconnectedness of, of the various animals, the, the First Nations concept that we are one, you know, we're mm -hmm. all interconnected. And, and you know, I, I say this with all sincerity. If we could replace all the conservation officers and the um, government biologists with grade three, four, and five students, <laughs> yeah. it would, the it world would be would much be a better healthier. Place. I, oh, yeah. in incredibly. Incredibly. Because, because kids, kids care about, like, they're, uh, dare I say, they're idealistic. And, and, and in a sense that they don't care about money. They care about making a difference. And somewhere yeah. along the way, we, we forget that. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, that, we, we appeal no. to our own avarice, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, we become, we become sort of corrupt. We become yeah. um, less, um, we get away from the, the First Nation concepts mm -hmm. that, you know, the, 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 the students, you know, they understand, you know, like we are one, which is a, a First Nation concept and that. And, and, you know, because of our upbringing, um, you know, we, they get away from that and they think that, uh, that humans are the apex organism in the world when, you know, we got to clearly get away from that concept and just yeah. see us as we're an organism that lives in a world that's all connected with other organisms, whether they're plants or animals or the water or whatever. And, and that's, uh, the students understand that. And I'm always blown away by some of the questions and some of their understanding. It's, it's incredible, Robert. Uh, yeah. What's, what's one of the best questions a kid has ever asked you? One that just sticks to mind. Ah, <laughs> well, one of the funniest ones, what I've never, never had, and, and then I'll get the other one. <laughs> and it was just recently on a, on a zoom uh, one. It says, uh, so do, do wolves fart? <laughs> and I went, um, depends what they think. <laughs> um, one of the, one of the best questions, well, it, it was a question. And, and the question was, um, I asked them, how, how do Arctic wolves in the winter get their water? How do they hydrate themselves? You know, it's 50 and 60. 50 and 60 below up there. And, uh, you know, so I said, you know, the, the rivers and the lakes are pretty frozen. Oh, well, they eat the snow. And I go, well, possibly they can get a little bit. It doesn't snow all that much in the Arctic. You know, when it's 20 and 30 below, you don't get much right. snow. Right. And then when it does, it turns to ice pretty quickly. Well, they eat the ice. And I go, well, that's, you know, that's uh, not going to get them a lot because that's, you know, 12, 13 feet thick, and, you know, they're just trying to scrape the surface of it, you know, so they, they think of that, and then this one um, a girl, she was probably about 10, 11 years old, and she said, it's what they eat is how they get their, uh, uh, their, <laughs> yeah. their water, because, um, you know, the organs are, are full of water, like, you know, your heart is 80% yeah. water, you're your your kidneys your your liver and wow. i said bingo that's absolutely correct and and that's so she figured kid. that out and man, many adults don't figure it out i mean even i was thinking i was like yeah what yeah. is it yeah because well, yeah. because wheat we, we we talk about wheat and you know bread production and stuff and how that's just a huge import export of water yeah that we yeah. never think about right all yeah. the water in there now okay last question for you because yeah yeah I, I i don't want to keep you all night 
But yeah. what, what's, the, what's the craziest encounter or perhaps the scariest, wildest, or even funniest encounter you've ever had with, with one of your wolves? Um, well, uh, you know, I, I'm a fairly big guy. Like I'm about 6'5 and 250 pounds. And the Arctic and the Hani, um, he loved to play with me. And, and in some ways it was playing. And in other ways he was teaching me lessons. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, this is my territory. And, uh, yeah, uh, it was winter time. He grabbed my jacket. You know, I had a big uh, kind of plaid um, woolen kind of jacket, and he grabbed the sleeve, and he dragged me ten feet on the ground. And and that and I let and, you know what time it is. And that so you know it wasn't that he was. I mean, if he really wanted to attack me, he, right. he could have. But uh, and that so I I got up uh, and <laughs> got a. Uh, you know, and got my my sleeve out of his mouth, and and that was fine. Um, the the other things that they can do that's really incredible is, you know, when I was out out there with in the enclosure with the and and even up at the other place where we lived, um, these are big animals, but they're very quiet. And I would sit out there, and uh, both Nahani and Mahegan could approach me, and they would either push their nose into my back or they'd paw my back. And I didn't even know they were there. Right. And, uh, and yet I, I knew that they were out there. It wasn't as if, you know, I was just sitting in the, out in the woods and, you know, these two wild animals came up. <clears throat> they could approach and be that quiet. Uh, and that, so I, I found that to be just so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome, man. Yeah, and that, uh, yeah, that they're, um, you know, I mean, we've done things, uh, you know, Tundra and I spent 30-minute private session with Jane Goodall in Kelowna, um, you know, which was just incredible. She was just in awe of Tundra. Um, you know, it's, uh, these are just such incredible animals that, uh, you know, people want to see both whether they're children or, or adults. Uh, um, you know, when I'm taking Tundra for a walk and that I get stopped lots of times and, you know, they get to pet her and, you know, um, the First Nations people that have seen her and interacted with her. Um, that book, you know, the that you saw, the um, um, Tundra, a gift from the creator, that's the first one. That's the one that cover is where Tundra's, uh, up in the snow in the right. mountains go and read Janae's story in that book um and uh um i won't say anything more about it but it gives you an idea as the as to the connection and and what tundra has done with um you know special needs students mm -hmm. there's stories of that in the book and 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 whatever just uh um yeah, it's been it's been an incredible journey, uh, Robert. That's that is so awesome. I mean, you you clearly illustrate this sacred bond that humans have with wolves yeah. that we've always have had. Yep. You know, I mean, band's best friend dog comes from a wolf. Yeah. Need yeah. I say more? Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Thank you so much for this opportunity, Gary. Uh, My it's, pleasure. It's been, it's been a wonderful experience. So I'm glad, glad you enjoyed it. And, uh, and that, so I, uh, I look forward to, uh, when do you uh, plan to, obviously you need to do some editing and whatever, or whatever, uh, in terms of the podcast that will be up on your. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you the link and then, yeah, there, oh, okay. there is, there is some editing. Yeah. Uh, just, just cause this one, cause the, the internet and stuff. So it might take sure. a little bit longer. But I'll yep. definitely send it to you when it's done. And um, like I'll I said, forward. thank you so much for this. It, it, it truly has been a privilege because not everybody gets this opportunity. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And it's all because of the wolves, Robert. It's not, it's not to do with me. It's them. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's, a, I, that's the point, right? Yep. <laughs> right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, awesome, it's, all about, it's all about them. And well, keep, so. keep doing, keep keep being the the platform for these animals these wolves i will
I will. Thank you. So, thank you very much for the opportunity, uh, Robert. It's been a pleasure.